Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin this study with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Lord, once again for the time that we have to study. Even though we've been struggling through um, chapter 13 of Judges, we ask, Lord, that you can enlighten our minds and give us insight into these things. We pray that um, the light we receive can be shared with others. We ask that you work upon each heart, our own hearts, and those around us that we have contact with. And we just pray, Lord, that um, your will can be done as far as this movement and the unity that you seek to have. Help us to be a part of that. Be with us now through thy Holy Spirit as we open your word together is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so um, we've been trying to understand um, Judges 13. So i um, going to go to the diagram that we have that I've been <clears throat> working out here. Now, this is, of course, of course, a working copy. It's us trying to sort out this structure. We know that there is um, in Judges 13 that when the angel comes to uh, Manoah's wife, that she doesn't know where he comes from. Um, that is, she did not ask where he came from. And the angel did not tell her his name. Now, we've attached not knowing where he comes from to Melchizedek and not knowing the name uh, to Palmoni. So we have these two symbols now tied together. And the one we would say represents the covenant that is, you know, the sanctuary uh, obviously, the priest, the pri priesthood, and Palmoni connects us to to prophecy. So we have this righteousness by faith symbol. We would say uh, attached to this prophecy symbol, and and I think that's a very interesting insight. You know that uh, Angela had, and that the Holy Spirit gave her, of course, uh, because as we we look at um, what this movement has been coming to understand in our various studies, the ones Friday night, morning studies, um, and, and even the one Sabbath morning, is an understanding of righteousness by faith, that we need a revelation of Christ. And we can see, of course, the sanctuary aspects in this story of Manoah and his wife um, with the offering. And we have, of course, uh, the angel of the Lord ascending upon uh, the smoke or the flames of that offering that is given. So um, we can definitely take this symbolism and apply it to what's happening in our movement as far as what's being predicted in our experience. So, so that's, that's where we're at as far as um, the basic ideas of this chapter. Now, I'd introduce this idea um, that... Uh, we would start this line at November 9th, but I, I put November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019 as, as the start of this. Now, and it's not that I'm saying that there, it, it starts with that whole period. I'm saying that those two periods are tied together. Now, we could also uh, put seven, um, uh, September September 11th, 2001, we could place that there as well. So, um, I mean, another way to look at this is we could have this as 9-11 and also oops, oops, what did I do there? I don't know what I did. Switch something. 9-11 and this 
well, that'd be nine, also represented there, if that makes sense to people. So it represents these, these three dates. Now, um, part of this is that I have here at the end, October 19th, 2019. So uh, this is going to be the Day of Atonement. So this is the 10th day, the seventh month is represented here in 2029. Now, I know that not as everybody's as familiar with oops, the, um, how we understand uh, April 5th, 2030, but uh, part of it is, let's see here. with the April 5th, 2030 date, I don't just have April 5th, 2030. I actually because that's the first day of the first month. I also mark the 10th day, the seventh month, October 8th, 2030. And, and then this would be the 10th day of the seventh month, one year prior. Now I put here nine months, which is 273 days, right, as, as a symbol. But if we were going to count from November 9th, 2018, or 2018, 1989, and we're going to count um, this period of time here, which is, uh, I guess, the way that we would look at it is one, four, five, eight, eight days. So that's the number of days uh, for the manna. And so that it would bring us to that date. Now we could also count um, from November 9th, 2019. And if we were going to count from that date, uh, this would bring us to um, the 14th day of the first month in 20 so this would be um whatever the date was can't remember i have to look it up just hang on so i would go from just hang on I'll do this because that's a period of um 3458 days and that brings me to April 29th, 9th. I'm putting the days between. So if anybody tries to figure this out, you'd come to uh, the day before. But it's April 29th, 2029. And, and of course, that's going to be Passover. So we have the Passover and the Day of Atonement in 2029 and this period of time is going to be from November 9th. And, and this period of time is, of course, this period of time here. So I get lots of things here. This is 494 months. And oops. So this is going to be 494 weeks, which is equal five, eight days. Now, as far as this nine months period, this is just, um, well, I'll get rid of that for now. We'll, we'll deal with that later. That's just going to be the period of time that's represented bringing about the birth of Samson from that would be the time of gestation, right? So there's a nine month period at the beginning of this 40 years. So um, in some ways we wouldn't really put it there, but um, 
that. So for now, we'll, we'll look at this. Does this make sense to people what we've done? We've taken 494 months. That's the period of the manna. And we count from November 9th, 1989. And then we take 494 weeks and we count from November 9th, 2019. And we get these two different dates in 2029. Uh, the, the one on October 19th marks a um, 10th day of the seventh month, which uh, marks a year period that's going to end on the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030, 187 days after April 5th, 2030. 30. So I can probably even add those dates in there. But for now, we're just trying to understand this, this uh, period of time. And we're taking this as representing the nine months of Samson. So for Samson to be born, um, there's obviously this gestation period. So we're taking this as Judges chapter 13. But we can lay it over top of this chronology. Is this making sense to anybody, what, what we're doing here? Anybody have questions? I don't... <clears throat> I'm not seeing too much of an issue with the first part of this. <clears throat> and I'm understanding kind of what you're doing, taking this out to 2029. Yeah. So. Okay. And, and that's because we have this chiasm of the name not known. Right. And then we have... Um, We also have uh, the name be known. And so even though we're, we're dealing this with Samson's birth and Samson's history is going to um, uh, cover this area again. So even though this in the story, it would be chronological, one following the other, we would take the story of Samson as a repeat and enlarge or the other way probably to look at it uh, more correctly is to see that that preamble to Samson's birth is really typical of what's going to happen to Samson. Does that make sense? Logical. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a type. It, it describes that history. Um, so, so to me, this is, is all consistent with what we have been doing, how we understand things, uh, how we understand the lines. And, you know, what more we have to do with this is, I mean, I put July 18th as the center, and I think that would be the thing that we don't, we're not necessarily certain about, um, whether we would make that the point. Now, there might, might be some way in which we could look at these spans of time and, and judge what is the actual center of this. Now, obviously, if we're going from either of these dates, November 9th, et cetera, it doesn't really work out. But what if we took the September 11th date? So when we look at September 11th, um, 2001, and we go uh, to July 18, 2020. We have uh, a period of time that is 6,885 days. Now that's that's almost doubled. Well, it's, it's slightly more than doubled of that four hundred and ninety-four weeks. Is 
it's basically um, 492 weeks, roughly, uh, times two, that span of time. So there's, is there any other way that we could address uh, that period um, from September 11th? Or would we choose some other date? To July, to July 18th, some other date than July 18th. I think we're going to have to work with this in this as as we are examining it, because right now what we're looking at with the name not known would describe yeah. the period of the movement. Right. It's a period of the movement. And then we're going to have the name being revealed in the next period of the movement. Right. So for the intent of this study mm -hmm. for what we are doing at this point we're looking to see does this make logical sense now the applications that, that are being given right now the 1000 or 14588 days or 49 months and then four, four months yeah and then the 3,458 days would seem to give us some clarity on what, what we're trying to address here. Yeah, because so, th so this thing that we see, so when we looked at 2030, so and this is back in 2018, so when we first, even before I knew about November 9th, uh, 2019. So this is in August of 2018. I had heard about Stephen's calculation, uh, but Jeff didn't mention anything about the November 9th date. He was more focused upon how it connected to October 22nd, 1844. That was um, Christ beginning his work at the inauguration of the holy place when he ascended into heaven. So um, in that event, there is a jubilee that goes on in heaven, Ellen White says, when Christ ascends into heaven. Now, of course, it doesn't fit in with any jubilee cycle per se, it, you know, in the sense that it's jubilee cycles, jubilees begin in, in the fall. But um, there's some symbolism there that, you know, we haven't really fully addressed dealing with these jubilees. But anyway... When we, when we found that date, the first day of the first month in 2030, being April 5th, I didn't have anything else with that. I mean, I, I wrote in my notes that, it, you know, it's the second coming, uh, not, not seriously, just that would be where it would fall in the line, you know, of, of things. And I, I thought it might be symbolic or something, but I didn't know, you know, I, I wasn't going to set time wasn't going to set a date that far in the future. I just knew that we had this structure and that we could lay these years and we could, we could move ahead into the future and we could mark these dates. But I, I didn't know what it meant in the summer of 2018. And then when we had the November 9th prediction, then I looked at it again and um, still I didn't have anything. It wasn't until we started this study of the lines and we were looking at the covenants made with Abraham that I had recognized something because I had looked at the date, how long it was, uh, 67,920 days uh, from the first day of the first month in 1844, though. Um, and, and I knew somehow that this was connected with 2300 months. So I knew a little bit about that. But when we found that this was 186 years, uh, biblical years, so that it would be how you would count, that would be 187 ordinal biblical years, if you wanted to say it that way. 
and that that same date produced from a prophetic year, 187 years and 20 months, and then all of these other witnesses that came along with that, um, we couldn't dismiss the April 5th, 2030 date. The thing that we know about our lines is that these are typical. We're in a typical line. We're not predicting external events connected with the special promises of, of God, you know, the outpouring of the latter rain, the close of probation, the loud cry, the second coming, or any, any such thing as that. We see this all is still typical mm -hmm. within our line. And so, um, so some people may misunderstand that. They may not really understand what it is we're trying to do in analyzing these dates. What this does tell us, though, is that all of these other things that have happened in our history are connected at least symbolically to these dates in the future, whatever those dates might mean. And, uh, and so you can't really dismiss that. You can't just say, well, we believe in July 18th, but we don't believe in dates that happen after July 18th or something like that. So, you know, like the School of the Prophets being sold 187 days after July 18th at 18.7% below it, the asking price. Uh, we, we would know that's not a coincidence. But we wouldn't have predicted that, right? Right. Even if we, even though I had written 187 days past July 18th and I saw the date, uh, January 21st, uh, 2021, it didn't really mean anything to me in the sense that's before, you know, that was even before July 18th. I'd drawn, you know, looked at that date, but it, it, it just didn't mean anything until we actually had an event. Now, I'm not saying that the world's going to last till 2029 or 2030. I don't know. Um, but I would see that what we've been given is an additional extension of time. And we've, in a sense, made an application of that. Uh, 2,688 days after um, Collins' line ends. Um, and that brings us to April 5th, 2030. So... So we have the, these symbols in the future. And the thing about the story of Samson is it is about the story of this movement because Samson typify, typifies Christ, but it's, it's dealing in a sense with the humanness of Christ's nature, which would be us. I mean, Christ is going to use us who are, we, we have a fallen human nature and he's gonna use us to his glory just as he did when he took humanity upon himself. And he's going to have this final generation that will reflect his character. And so how we're applying this story of the judges to our history doesn't mean that's the only way you can apply it. And so I, I would think that this, this fits in with what we already understand. And, you know, so maybe July 18th is the center of this chiasm. It seems to me it would work. But maybe it's not just even about July 18th. It's about the whole structure. So um, any other thoughts on this? You know, it's a lot to sort of take in something to contemplate on. And any other thoughts? It would be nice if somebody would... Well, you just had a thought that this is something for us to comp contemplate about. Yeah, but we need we need to contemplate the cloud. <laughs> now, if July eighteenth is not the center of this chiasm, yeah, 
if we were if we extended it out, that would mean that we would be extending the latter part of the chiasm to a further date, right? Uh, no, no, we wouldn't. No, we we the the end of the chiasm would be correct um, because this isn't necessarily uh, a completely balanced chiasm. I mean, it is because we didn't put July eighteenth as the center of. 14,588 days, right? It's, uh, well, let me see here. Um, so if we go, because when we go to these other dates, which I don't have written in here, I need to write them in. Um, so if we went from, um, the beginning date here, which is November 9th, 1989. Um, and we went actually chronologically half, halfway. It would bring us to October 29th, 2009. So it doesn't really bring us um, to anything. Um if we, so, so there are other ways that we could look at it. Um, because we have November 9th, 1989, but remember this, this begins a period of 777 days, right? Ending on December 25th, 1991, right? All right. So, I mean, maybe in some way we would we would have to incorporate these 777 days as part of the structure. Maybe you count from the end of that, from December 25th, um, 1991 to July 18th. Maybe there's some kind of structure here that we haven't we haven't even looked at yet. Right. So. As this unfolds, maybe we will see more clearly, but I still prefer to take July 18, 2020 as the center. Um, but it's also part of the 777 structure, right? So the other way, I guess, to look at this, if we, if we wanted to look at this, I, I guess what we could do is we could put um, some more dates in here. I hope people don't find this tedious, but uh, this is how I study. So here we would put um, December 25th, 1991, right? So maybe I'll do it this way. So December 25th, 1991. So we have a 777 inclusive day count there. Right. So, so that means we're obviously counting here from 1989. <clears throat> And then, um, obviously, if we we're counting from 2019, we'd get December 25th, uh, 2021. So, I mean, we could put both of these dates in here as well. I'm not understanding. So stop for a second. Okay. Okay, you're going 777 days. And you're saying that takes from September 11, 2001. Oh. Nope take November 9th, 1989. Okay. November 9th, 1989. Okay. Yeah. Just because we have those two dates we have. So this is the top part here. Right. right. So if okay. I this up here, that's just matching up with here. So we got these two periods of 70, 777 days. Now, of course you can see, um, 
when I when I do this here, I put 2021. 2021's way over here, right? Like, well, not way over here. It's over here somewhere, right? It's past July 18th, but because in here would be included that 777 days. So I'm primarily looking here at this 1991 one, but you understand the idea that I'm I'm taking that these both are sort of equivalent symbols. So in this case, what what I, maybe what I should do is I do this. Um, right. So I, I, I would as a um, just a way to re represent this. This would be December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. Right, and then the, of course on the other side is November 9th, 2019, right? So, so I know it's not it's not the, the best way to represent it, but it's one way to represent. It. So, so this, this here, I mean, this whole thing then is an expansion if we take it as, um, in, you know, it's an expansion of something. So this is this is the end point, right? We're taking these seven, seven, seven days as including July 18, right? So that means the center of this is that 777 structure. Does that make sense? Even though we have it at the beginning here, you know, we, we could take all this and move it over. But we're just saying that November 9th is parallel in 1989 and in 2019. They're parallel. And they also represent September 11th. Right. 2001. Right. So that's what that beginning is telling us. All right. There's a 777 days at the end and there's a 777 days in the middle of this chiasm, which would imply that there's probably a 777 days at the end, which we don't know about yet. Does that make sense? It's presented well. Okay. So, so we're being given here in Judges 13, a larger stru structure. Um, that incorporates these different lines into something that shows that that Samson, the the preamble to his birth, illustrates our lines in various ways. Now, where we're where we're getting this from, remember, is the forty years, right? So I took the forty years as being the period that the manna fell. And that's, of course, 14,588 days or 494 months, right? But I'm also putting there the nine months, the gestation period, that this is representing this, you know, the beginning of this period till the time that Samson is born, right? And the beginning of this period is at the beginning of the 40 years. And, you know, Samson's going to be throughout this history. But when we take the history of Samson, it's going to cover the same history. So to me, this, this is the key. If, you know, if I'm going to look at this history and understand it, to me, the key is the 40 years because it ties us to the 40 years in the wilderness. But, but we've already had this understanding about um, the 14,588 days as representing things in our history. So, so there's there's got to be more to it than what you know what we have so far. But I think this gives us a bit bigger picture of of what this line is about. That it's meant to to show us basically a fractalized history of this movement, that it exists on these different levels. You could start in 1989, you can start in, at September 11th, 
and you can start in 2019 on November 9th. But it also includes that period of time, that 777 days. Now, what, what that means at the end, whether we just have a span of time that's 777 days or it's represented in some other way, um, I don't know. In the, in the parameter of the study, what we're trying to do more than anything else, if I'm understanding this right, is to lay out a line to see, does this fit? Does this work? Right. So directly, what we are attempting to do is to follow Miller's rules in how this line is to be placed. Mm hmm with what we already know, all the information that's been given us. And, and remember, when we, we, we have light that's established, things that we know. And then when we, we look at the scriptures here, we're studying Judges 13. Does this fit with what we already understand? And, and we would say that it does. But it, it's giving us new questions, new, new areas of inquiry. And um, and yet it's it's not contradicting anything we know. Okay, so <clears throat> the application for the name not known being applied with the movement is that the message that should be given to the world is not yet understood. And yeah. that the, the period of the name known or the name understood is the period where the name begins to be disseminated but because this is tied with Samson, this is to be a strong message. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Yeah. So this is. Um, yeah. And, and we know, though, that it's, it's a strong message, but it's ironic. I mean, so it's human weakness combined with divine power, right? That's what this message is about. That's what Adventism is about, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's never been about human power. It's ne never been about man. It's always been about the work of Christ in the human heart. And, you know, we as Seventh-day Adventists have a hard time recognizing our deficiencies. We think ourselves as better than others. And yet, you know, we've been we've been shown through our study of these lines much more clearly our weaknesses, but also much more clearly God's leading in power. So, uh, you know, to me, when I, when I look at, at at what we're seeing here, I mean, God is showing that he's directing, but we're, we, we're not shown the end. We're given sufficient light for our feet. And, and that light is sufficient, right? I mean, it's been carrying us through all this time. So I, I see no reason to, re, to move July 18th from the center, other than we would say that this whole structure is is this is the center right so we're, we're putting a structure at the beginning and we're putting this structure in the middle the seven 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 days 
Um, but we're also saying that this is at the beginning as well. But that can work. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah, it definitely works. Um, there's just still a lot of pieces of this puzzle missing. That's all I'm saying here. And, and we don't know exactly what this all means in, in this overall context, right? There's still things that are going to be, I think, come from this. Once, once we understand it more thoroughly. You know, so right now as a movement, we're struggling with what to do. Like, what is our responsibility with our meetings? Um, you know, as, um, you know, as I talk to people um, within our movement from, from these other groups, and I haven't talked to everyone, obviously, um, but tempting to get a hold of people. Um, whether there's really an interest in what we're doing or not, I don't know. But, you know, I, I plan on drafting a letter that's just, that's, um, that sort of makes clear why we're inviting people um, to some studies, you know, for this, for this weekend. Um, but, but I think, you know, there's no way that I can shake the conviction that what we're seeing in what's being revealed to us is, um, is present truth and that it's needed for everyone. It would seem a shame for people not to know about what it is we're understanding. And, and if we want to have this name revealed to us, because when we think about Palmona, I mean, we know that he's, he's the wonderful number, um, but he's, he's also co connected with this revelation of truth. Now, wh where do we first, where did we first look at the word um, dealing with the looking glass vision? Where, where was that? I mean, what was the context? Why did we even get into that in the first place? The looking glass occurs um, with the children of Israel. So, yeah, but the question I'm asking this movement, when did this movement first look at it? Why? What was the, the reason for looking at it? What? Because we have the, the Mara, Mare, I guess it depends how you pronounce it, Mara, I would say, not Mare, but uh, Mara, that's Mara. the one, um, you know, it just depends how, Mara, Mara, which is what it probably would be pronounced, Mara, Mara, but anyway, the pronunciation is not that important. Uh, the thing is, that is the, the, um, the 2300 days, right? The Mare is the 2300 days. The Mara is the looking glass, the two different, two different visions. Yeah, I know. I just, I don't agree with the pronunciation. That's, I get confused because people pronounce them differently than I would. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, so the Mara that's the that's the looking glass, and that's Exodus thirty eight verse eight. Well, it's also Genesis forty six two. Yeah, but it's interesting that it's thirty eight point eight, right? Because yeah. if you double that, <clears throat> you get seven seven six. One short of seven seven seven. But you're. We also have it occurring in Numbers 12. So, so I, can I get this straight in my mind? In, the, in chapter 13, where it mentions um, continents, is that, is that the mar, is that the looking glass? 
No. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, you're saying that this is in numbers 12? Number, numbers 12, 6. Okay. So in numbers 12, 6. Um, yeah. So you're going to have that word there as well. Doesn't show that in my uh, King James concordance for some reason, even though it has, it shows me nine occurrences of Mara. And it shows Genesis 46, 2, Ezekiel 1, 1, Ezekiel 8, 3, Ezekiel 43, verse 2 to 3, Daniel 10, verse 7 and 8. Three times it's there. And then the looking glasses in Exodus 38, 8. Right. Because if you take 777 and divide it by two, it's uh, 388.5. Right. But what, what we're dealing with as you're just going through this right now. Yeah. Um, the ones that are not coming up out of um, Cruden's, and I'll, I'll verify this, but as I recall from the study I did, uh, Numbers 12, 6 does not occur out of Cruden's, and neither does 1 Samuel 3, 15. Okay, but I, I'm looking at Strong's uh, King James Concordance, and it gives me the list every time a word shows up. And this Strong's number is 4759, and it's there in Numbers 12, 6, 4759. But for some reason, it never shows up in the... Strong's King's James Concordance. So that verse doesn't. So that's kind of odd. Um, so it's a hidden verse, so to speak. Okay. Does that make sense? No, I, I understand what you're saying. I know that Strong's has gone through multiple revisions. Yeah. And I, you know, I accept what you're saying. Yeah. But the fact that he says, I'll make myself known unto him in a vision, the fact that it's hidden and it's only revealed in this particular looking glass vision, I think is significant. The fact that it doesn't occur in Cruden's and it doesn't occur in Strong's uh, listed in the King James Concordance of Strong's. Now, if I go to, yeah, so here, um, let's hang on. It, it shows that there's 11 occurrences um, in, in Strong's dictionary itself where it has it. Um, and in the King James Concordance, what they do is they take Strong's Dictionary, all the places that he has the word, and they just list them instead of giving you all the verses. And then you just click on, I'll just show you, you I mean, for people who don't know how uh, eSword works. So what I've done here is we have numbers 12, 6, and you can see if you've got a good enough screen, this is number 4759. It's the feminine of 4758, which is a vision, right? And it means looking glass or vision, right? And then you can see over here I have uh, Brown's Driver's Briggs. You know, I can click on that, and it'll give me the meaning of the word. It means a mirror. Um, and then if I use my King James Concordance, this will give me all of the place, all of the verses where Strong's lists uh, this word, and it doesn't have numbers 12 or 6, even though we have the Strong's number 4759 attached to it. And then if I just go to Strong's itself, it says there's 11 occurrences of this word. Um, we're over in the, the concordance, uh, the King James concordance. It shows there's only nine uses of this word. So... It's kind of a you know, discrepancy there. And so what I'm saying is that this word is, is hidden in these concordances. Um, that, Lord will, that the Lord says, I will make myself known unto him in a vision in this uh, Mara. Um, uh, vision, right, which is the looking glass, the mirror. So this is something that's hidden in these concordances, it occurs nine or 11 times, Iran says, 
right? You can see that. So we got this discrepancy, 9-11. Um, so I think this is significant, especially since it's in numbers 12 or 6. Well, let's let's take this to a, a, a little a different side note. Okay. I think we can accept numbers 12, 6 when we apply that as shekels multiplied by gera. Yeah. That that would be a, a representation of the 2520. Right. It's a shorthand for 2520. Okay, the other verse that we're not finding in with this, but pops up in my my use of Esword, is First Samuel three fifteen. Now, this is important to me for a couple of reasons, but the biggest reason three fifteen multiplied by eight gives you also twenty five twenty. Okay. So here is this where Moses is standing before Miriam and Aaron. And it is said, as the verse reads, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision. And will speak unto him in a dream. Yeah. So this is God speaking to Miriam and Aaron, right? Yeah. And then in First Samuel <clears throat> three fifteen, and Samuel lay until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Mm -hmm. So. When we're tying these two back with Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 8, mm -hmm. we're tying this portion to the first message to Ezekiel and the second message to Ezekiel. Right. And then when Daniel gets tied in, especially with the the chapters that we're looking at there, all of a sudden we're, we're tying it with an additional vision that was given to Daniel. And it became a very personal vision. Yeah, and this is Daniel, what we call Daniel 11. I mean, it's chapter 10, verse 7, that he is given this vision, right? He says, I, Daniel, well, it's not given, but it mentions the word vision. Alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. Right. So it's going to mention that word there twice. And and also we can see that he sees it only, they don't see it. So that's the personal nature of it. Right. Therefore, I was left alone and saw this great vision. So he's going to mention that. Now, this great word is the word Gadal. So um, this is you know, often connection with, with it, you know, the, the horns in Daniel chapter eight. Um, and there remained no strength in me for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption and I retained no strength. So this, this is revealing the weakness of humanity. That's what happens when we see Christ. And this movement has talked about this revelation of Christ and yet we know that this comes through a study of Palmoni, right? That we're not going to find this revelation of Christ in the usual channels that people have used, which is, you know, talking about righteousness by faith and the theory of righteousness by faith. That's important, but we don't have that direct guidance from God that we get when we understand where we are in history. You know, the most important thing that Parminder said, maybe the only true thing that he really said, was where he used the Ellen White statement, which I always have a hard time finding. I, I find it every once in a while, and then I can't find it again, just because I always get the wrong wording. But um, it's the one that when we pass over the ground of fulfilled prophecy, 
that light reflects back upon past events. And then those, so as we pass through events, we now can see events in the past in their, in their significance. And th that light then shines forward to events in front of us, right? So the past, the present, and the future are all tied together as prophecy is being fulfilled. And for each of us individually, as we have this relationship with Christ, as we go through this Christian walk, we start to recognize this in our own life and how God is leading us presently helps us to understand the past, right? Those things that were dark to us in our past life, right? In our earlier years, things that happened to us that, you know, we didn't really understand. Well, now those things make more sense, but also they show us our future. Would people agree with me on that? Would people experience that? I'm not going to disagree. Okay. okay, good. You know, and, and for me personally, one is, you know, when I first met Heidi, I mean, that date becomes the significant date, you know, um, you know, 777 days before I turned 52 and 52 times 360 is 181720, right? So, um, so there becomes these, these symbols in our lives. But even just things that have happened, our experiences, uh, what, we, what we have gone through, we now understand a bit more why. And, and this, of course, on a personal level, it's also true on a prophetic level, right? Um, so when this movement had passed through these events like July 18th, did it not give us greater insight into Millerite history? I would have to say yes. Yeah, and which is what this movement has been about, understanding Millerite history. And that for those who have not had that experience, for the Seventh-day Adventists who have not been a part of this movement, um, that's not going to be true to them, right? They're not going to know and understand that history. Um, so, so we've been given a privilege to understand Millerite history, and we can show this. Um, even when, when we studied um, early writings, page 74, I mean, we were given so much light there about our movement but also about the past, right? So to understand Millerite history in its significance, its typical significance, as well as its just historical significance, how, how the Adventist church formed, how things came about. It helps us to understand uh, what Ellen White is writing about, which we wouldn't have understood this before, even though I'd read that page many, many times. Um, our experience and and then allows us to study these things in a new way. So this is, you know, this is, this is, I believe, however people want to pronounce it, Mara, Mara vision. Mara. Okay, well, Mara or Mar Mara. How do you pronounce it? Mara. Okay. Because the, the the problem that I get into is that when you get into the Greek, when we go into the New Testament, yeah, Mara is <clears throat> what would normally be translated as Mary. Right. That's that's bitter. Bitterness. Yes. And Mara with the accent on the on the second syllable is the looking glass yeah it's just my understanding the accents on the first syllable but but anyway 
<laughs> and also the vowel is a little bit different. But anyway, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's hard to distinguish the two. We should just call it the looking glass vision and the 2300 day vision. Hey, Dwight, I just asked you if there was on the looking glass. If you're asking about in Judges chapter 13, it's not, it doesn't have that. Word. That's right. Yeah, so it's not the looking glass. It's Mare. It's Mare. That's a different vision altogether. That's the second of the three visions. Okay. Uh, I apologize. No, no, no need to apologize. It's just clarification. And we okay. need to make sure that you understand so that we're all together going forward. Tip Thank you. Copy yeah, that. This, this, yeah, this is 4758 in Judges 15. That's 4758 in Judges 13.6. 4758 is the one that's in. Daniel chapter 8, when it talks about 2300 days, the vision of the evening and the morning um, is, and, and I think I remember that the Strongs had that backwards uh, back when I had my original Strongs, um, that it actually had the wrong word. But in, in Judges, um, or not Judges, Daniel, um, it says about uh, the vision of the evening and the morning. Where's that? I make this man to understand the vision. And uh, then the vision of the evening and the morning. That's going to be Maria. All right, so the Maria vision. And then it's going to mention uh, the chazon. Uh, it says, shut up thou the chazon. And that's going to be uh, the longer vision, the 2520. So, so I, I think here this diagram, I mean, is going to, we're going to end up somehow completing it, maybe even studying uh, the, the story of Samson itself and putting it on a line might clarify some of this. Okay, so April 29, uh, 2029, is as Iran pointed out there, it's 3,027 days from July 18th. So we could probably uh, place this in here somehow. Um, I'll do it this way. 3,207. Okay, yeah, okay, 3,207, pardon me, yeah. I said that backwards. So we take the three thousand two hundred and seven days, and of course that's got the March twenty seventh symbolism in there. Okay, and then, um, yeah, there's probably other things that we will, we will notice as we go through this structure. And probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll just move this structure over a little bit and put the other dates there, April 5th and the October 8th, 2030 dates uh, to sort of finish off the diagram and see what we can find. Now, you know, and we, we need to, to understand, you know, what we're doing, so, you know, for people who are looking at us dealing with these numbers, we know that what, what we have is we have some established dates and we have the 40 years given to us from Judges 13. 
And since we have, it's a chiasm, and we have 13, 13 as the center of that chiasm, which is a doubling. And then we have uh, July 18th, which we place there. Um, we now have at least a witness to it being connected to the bigger structure chronologically. Um, and that is, if we take the 494 weeks as representative of, of the 40 years, and we count those from, um, and that's from November 9th, 2019, is it? Yeah, so that's going to be, uh, yeah, so it's that 10-year period. Um, and nine years and whatever it is, 218 days, um, it's going to bring us to this April 29th date. And of course, we, we can see the significance because it's a Passover. And then that's going to tie us back to July 18th in 3,207 days. So these types of structures, uh, I mean, they, they give witness to the past. They tie the past to the present or to events that we have passed through presently and they give us light for our feet so it tells us a bit more about this history what it, what it means what what july 18 means and and my view is that um uh, judges 13 uh is addressing specifically this 777 structure from November 9th to December 25th, 2021. And why would I say that? I mean, we know that it has all these symbols of 9-11 in it. So why would I take this, this Judges 13 and say, well, you know, this is this isn't, this isn't, I mean, it, it applies to the big line, but why would I why would I tie it to the 777 days? What would be my reason for doing this? Because we have the angel of the Lord coming down, right? So we would say, well, that's 9-11. And that's originally how I was looking at it. But what were the reasons for us to, to tie this to, to the 7-7 seven, seven day structure? At least it's a zoom into that structure, which gives us this bigger line. Why would, why would we do that in, in this chapter? What are the symbols that we're picking up on? Remember, we have Zora, right? Right. Okay. So we got Bumblebee Road. We got the Danites of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. That is, he's from Noah. His wife is barren and bears not. And, and however we look at this wife, whether we looked at it as the church or whether we, because I think we can, but we can also look at it as uh, the church within the movement. If, whichever way we look at it, we know that this is, this me message of that comes from Noah, from rest, is a message that has to be given to Adventism. And that message is going to be Samson, right? Correct. And so this movement is the one that gives birth to that message. So we can apply it to the light that came in that period of the 777 days. So when we zoom into that, we are given this bigger structure, right? So this whole structure is part of it, but we're, we're zooming into that way mark. We're zooming into July 18th in order to understand this. Now, how else do we connect July 18th to the number 13? We didn't really address this directly yet in as we've been studying Judges 13.
Research what happens that. if we take um what's that somebody was I'm saying say please please repeat that question okay so the symbol 13 how do we attach it to july 18th Thirteen being the number of rebellion. Okay, but we attach it to July eighteenth because if we take twelve times twelve, one hundred and forty-four, right? Multiplied by thirteen, we get one eight seven two. Right. 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 The thirteen days, remember, is uh, one. You know, a day has. 1440 minutes and we took 13 days is 18720 13 days has that many um uh hours well that's minutes isn't it 13 days has 18720 minutes it has um much less hours than that It's 312 hours and 13 days. Times 60 is 18720 minutes. So there's so so we understood that, um, and we understood this first from the Mayan calendar, right? With the end of the 13th back tune, or however you want to look at it, however you want to call it. Um, um, that it's one hundred uh, one million eight hundred and seventy two. 2000 days from the start of the Mayan calendar to um, <clears throat> uh, that date, December 21st, 2012, right? So that's because a back tune is 144,000 days. So you have 13 of them, that's going to be 1,872,000 days. So, so we know this now. And, and so if we're going to say that this is a zoom into any way mark, it must be a zoom into July 18th. Is that, is that reasonable enough explanation? And that would be the reason why I put it as the center. I would say so. And so it gives us all this light when we do this, right? It, it, um, it helps us understand our history more clearly. It establishes things that we already know. So it gives more evidence to what we already understand. And it's giving us light for our feet. It's telling us about the future. So I, I don't see any reason to to dismiss this. I and, and I'm pretty sure we're going to find more as we do, as we as we look into this. We're going to see more and more uh, what's being represented here. <clears throat> now, just because um, we only got you know, like 10 minutes left. Um, I'm, I'm not asking for speculation, I guess, but I'm asking for how would we clarify having dates so far into the future? So, so we have these dates in the future. We're not predicting time. Right? We're not predicting an event. We're just measuring time. How do we justify this? How do we justify this structure as far as it showing us the future? Future dates. Are we not just looking at a pattern? Okay, so we're looking at a pattern. And, and we can still argue that we don't know that those dates are ever going to come, right? Correct. So, so we don't have to expect any events on those dates. But they are symbolic dates, right? I mean, Passover, Day of Atonement, these are symbolic dates. And we can tie these symbolic dates to events in the past. 
from things that we have uncovered as we've studied uh, these lines. And so we don't have to say, you know, well, Jesus isn't coming back at least for another, you know, nine years or whatever, whatever it is now, seven years, eight years. You know, that's not what we're saying. And we haven't been saying that about dates that we've looked at in the future ever since July 18th. The most that we could do is note the significance of dates or events that have happened when they've fallen on significant dates and become part of our structure, right? Right. But we have not predicted any events and we're still not predicting events. Just because we have a date in the future doesn't mean we can predict an event on that date. Now, this goes back to the August 13th date that um, Daniel Vanderhorst was noticing even before July 18th, where he was trying to predict a date on August um, 13th, 2022. And, and I just said, well, you know, you can put a date there, but we... We don't know what it means um, because it's outside of our lines. At that time, we all didn't have any dates past December 25th, 2021. But I also argued that even December 5th, 2021, we didn't know what it means. We understood it symbolically to represent the Sunday law. And some people took that to mean that we believed that the Sunday law was going to occur on that date. And, and that was never taught by either Jeff or myself, right? Jeff understood that it was a symbolic date, that that would be the, the soonest we could expect the Sunday law would be after that date, at least, if you're going to tie anything to it. I mean, one is it was a Sabbath, and the next day would have been a Sunday, December 26, 2021. Um it was, you know, so <clears throat> we experienced that. And that's when we started uh, this study of understanding the lines was December 26th, 2021. So, <clears throat> um, and December 26, 2021, uh, just to refresh some people's memory, because you may not remember this, it was uh, a number of weeks from what date so how many weeks from what date i'm not easily recalling that <laughs> yeah so um so when we go back to december 26th 2021 if we count um, 186 weeks, that is, it's it's actually going to be the, the start of the 186th week since uh, we had time come into this message. Because remember, Jeff is going to have that 9-11 prayer on uh the e at sunset on June 9th, 2018, beginning June 10th. Right? Got it. Okay. And so if you count to December 26, 2021, that is commencing because that's the Sunday. That week is the 186th week from that. Now, another way people could look at it is, you know, the camp meeting itself ran a week. Um, so that would be the first week. And you could say it's the 187th week from the start of that camp meeting in 2018 in, in Italy. Right. So, so we have that July 18th symbol attached to the start of this understanding of the lines. And we have the anniversary of this study on December 26th, which is going to be, of course, uh, in this case, it's going to be a Monday, 
it's going to be the 250 second study. Right. If if our studies continue, Lord willing. Right. So so God has given us these symbols to guide us that he's leading us in this understanding. And, and but yet we're not predicting events. We're just measuring time. It's 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 a part of watching and waiting. Would we agree with that? And, yes. And we agree that it's not time will tell. Because time will tell would be a predicting events, wouldn't it? Yes, would be. Yeah, yeah. Because we'd say, well, you know, we're gonna we we don't we're gonna predict an event on this date, and and if it happens, you know, then time will tell. If it doesn't happen, time will tell. But we're not we're not even saying that in measuring a time and putting a date in the future. We're not saying time will tell. We're just watching and waiting. We're measuring the time. We're looking for the signs of the times. We're looking for the light on our path. We're looking for those way marks as they appear. We can't, we can't know what those events are going to be. Our light does not shine into the future in that sense. So you know, hopefully people find that this study is 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 beneficial looking at, at Judges 13. I don't know more what we can do with Judges 13, though we'll probably come and look at this again tomorrow because some of us will have mulled over some of this and have a few more insights. But we're then going to have to go to Judges 14 and start to address Samson himself and putting that on a line. So... Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay. So let's begin with, or let's, let's close with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful uh, for what you are showing us in your word. We're grateful for the way that you have worked in our lives and in this movement. And in the history of the world and in your church. And we know, Lord, that there are precious souls that you are speaking to and instructing. And we need to have a message, message to encourage them. I pray, Lord, that you can give us wisdom, that you can give us this message so that it can be shared with others. We know that it's not so much argument, but it's the unction of the Holy Spirit, the way that you work in our lives, the character that you present, that is going to be the powerful witness to bring souls to you. And so we pray, Lord, that each day we can spend time studying and praying, and that throughout the day we can be aware of your presence and your voice speaking to us. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.